This week on 4Y Weekly, it was a wild time for the World of Outlaw Sprint Cars at the Eldora Speedway, and the Late Model Series was also back in action. The World of Outlaw Sprint Cars took to the Super Half Mile Eldora Speedway, with Jack Hoddenchild leading them to the green. Hoddenchild and Steve Kinzer would pull away from the field in the early going, but on lap number 24, while under a caution, Hoddenchild would run out of fuel. On the restart, David Gravel would assume the race lead and pick the outside lane in turn number one, but Gravel and Kerry Madsen would viciously collide, sending them up the racetrack into Craig Delansky, Paul McMahon, and Schaefer. All drivers would walk away from the nasty crash, although Gravel would voice his displeasure with Madsen later on. That would hand the lead over to Chad Kemenaw when the racing got underway, and the battle was for the sixth position between Tony Stewart and Sammy Swindell, giving each other slide jobs in every corner, but as this one would wind down, nobody would have anything for the driver of number 63, Chad Kemenaw, who would hold on for the win. Donnie Schatz in second, Steve Kinzer, Cody Dara, and Darren Pittman rounding out the top five. I could see there was going to be a wreck getting in there, but uh, you know, I just aimed to the bottom. I figured they were going to the outside. I could see what was going to happen, but uh, you know, we got lucky there. We kept our nose clean, and um, you know, we had a couple of guys blow a uh Sammy and Steve both blew tires right in front of us here. We didn't get into them, but uh, you don't want to win like that. But like I say, we've given them away, so we're not. I'm not complaining. I don't care if the win's a win. They pay the same. Night number two would see McMahon and Swindell on the front row, and Sammy would take the high side into corner number one to take the race lead. Meanwhile, the battle would be on for the second spot with McMahon holding it and Joey Saldana in the great clips number nine wanting it. Saldana would then take it going into corner number one and would then set his sights on race leader Swindell. A late race restart would be the end for Saldana as he would lose the motor in the number nine and fall back allowing Swindell to get away from the rest of the field and grab his fourth win of the World of Outlaws Sprint Car Series season. Dale Blaney would come across the line in second ahead of Craig Delansky, Gravel and Darren Pittman. Now, I really didn't know but, you know, what kind of advantage, but, I mean, it, the way the car was rolling through there, I knew that, man, if somebody's faster, I mean, it had to be just really awesome, I mean, because this thing was almost on rails, so um, it was just stuck down so hard that, uh, I mean, I could just drive around there like we're driving down the freeway. Taking a look at the intense battle for the Sprint Car Series points lead, and Sammy Swindell was able to capitalize on his Saturday night win and take the lead back from Donnie Schatz, marking the fifth consecutive race that the duo has swapped the lead. Joey Saldana holds the third spot with Steve and Craig Kinzer rounding out the top five. Jason Sides, Craig Delansky, Cody Dara, Chad Kemenaw, and Kerry Madsen hold down position six through ten in your World of Outlaws Sprint Car Series standing. The series next invades the state of Pennsylvania on Wednesday night for the Gettysburg Clash at the Lincoln Speedway. And this is the first race for the series at the Speedway since 2009. Time trials are scheduled to start at 7 p.m. The series then moves over to the famed Williams Grove Speedway on Friday night for night one of a two-day event. Saturday features the Morgan Cup and the Outlaws versus the PA Posse. Races start at 7.30 p.m. each night and you can watch both Friday and Saturday night's action from Williams Grove Live on your computer at dirtvision.com. Well, it's about as tough as it is anywhere there. I mean, it's a track all of its own. It's, uh, you know, it's got great big long straightaways and tight corners, and, and those guys get around it awful well. Uh, I mean, uh, they run it as well there. They're local guys as anywhere there is, so uh, uh, it's always tough when you go in there. Every time you go to uh, Williams Grove, you know it's going to be a, it's gonna be a fight from the moment you get in to the moment you get out, just uh, just getting in the show, uh, that's what you got to do. You just got to hope everything's rolling right for you when you get there, because uh, you can, you know, even if you got a quick car, things you don't have a little luck on your side. It's can make for a really tough night. 
top of the Outlaws, top of the Posse. So, you know, there's definitely a big rivalry there with the Posse fans and the, you know, the World of Outlaw cars coming into town. They like to see their locals do good, and that's pretty cool because it puts a little bit extra into the show. And the track's so weird that it's got its own sort of skill set idiosyncrasies. And it's almost, for us, it's the closest we'll get to a road course with a different technique. Williams Grove is probably one of the hardest tracks in the country when it comes to being uh, a mechanic and as a driver. It changes so much, and it's stuff that I actually didn't realize until I left there, not, not racing. And it uh, definitely presents a challenge, and uh, very excited to go there. I think all the drivers as a whole, PA and the World of Outlaws, we respect each other and, and appreciate what we all do. And, uh, I definitely know them guys out there are as good as any of us out here, so we definitely have to be on our game to run with them guys. Stay with us. Coming after the break, we head south with the World of Outlaws Late Model Series. The action, the battles, the excitement. Get ready for 800 horsepower of ground-shaking racing. The Super Dirt Car Series Big Block Modifieds are coming to your town. Be there to witness the mighty Big Blocks. Returning to Rolling Wheels Raceway Park for Dirt Car All-Star Weekend. Tickets are on sale now. All tickets include a free fan pit pass. Get your tickets now at RollingWheelsRaceway.com. Sunday, May 27th, Rolling Wheels Raceway Park, Route 5, Eldridge. The World of Outlaws Late Models invaded the 311 Motor Speedway, and on the pole, it's T-Mac Timmy McCready. As the race got underway, they would be three wide for position number three, and that would last until turn three, where Daryl Lanigan and Chris Ferguson would get tangled up. The battle would then be on for the runner-up spot between Lanigan and Eckert and Eckert would hold on to the position. A mid-race caution would bunch the field up as Clint Smith and Dennis Franklin would get tangled up, causing a chain reaction pileup. And on the restart, McCready would waste no time getting out to a 12-car length lead over Eckert. And up front, it was all Timmy McCready as he would snap a nearly 10-month winless slump. Eckert would come across the line in second ahead of Lanigan, Steve Shaver, and Clint Smith. With like four to go, I went to the top of one and two because the, the, the camera guys were taking all kinds of pictures. So I thought, man, somebody must be close because they hadn't took any all race. And then I saw Craig the next time give me five for a signal and I thought, okay, if, just get back where you are. And if, you, if Rick Hocker drives by us, we just tip our cap to him and tell him thanks. You know, and he did a nice job, and if he doesn't, then we'll get lucky enough to make some money. And uh, like I said, we needed it. We needed a morale boost. We needed the money even more. So it's uh, it, tonight was a good night. Saturday night, the series would jump the border to take on the Pine Tree 50 at the Swainsboro Raceway. Once again, it was T-Mac Timmy McCready starting on the pole in this one with Chris Smokey Madden in second. And from the drop of the green, the two would battle side by side until the race would be stopped with a pileup over in corner number four. The car on the move after the restart would be the 29 machine of your current World of Outlaws Late Model Series point leader, Daryl Lanigan, getting past car number 19 of Tim Fuller and the 24 of Eckert, putting Daryl in the number three spot as he would then chase down McCready for the runner-up position. Eventually, Lanigan would be able to chase down your race leader, Madden, going down the backstretch, briefly taking the lead until the caution would fly for spinning cars in front of the leaders, and that would reset the running order. From there, Madden would be able to hold on to the win, with Chubb Frank eventually getting into position number two ahead of Lanigan. Timmy McCready and Tim Fuller would round out the top five. Our car was good, I mean really good on the start and uh, I knew McCready was a little softer on tire and I was concerned about him beating us off of the bottom on that start but uh, our car was great and we got to run off of two just about every restart and uh, was able to pull back by him in three and four and, and uh, you know drive off and hold our own. Taking advantage of back-to-back -back top five finishes, Daryl Lanigan holds on to the series point lead over Rick Eckert. Chubb Frank has moved into the number three spot with Shane Clanton and Bub McCool rounding out the top five. Timmy McCready moves into position number six ahead of Vic Coffey, Clint Smith, Pat Doerr, and Mike Marler. 
be sure to join us next week here on 4 Wide Weekly as we recap the Morgan Cup and take a look forward as the big blocks get ready for All-Star Weekend.